Okay, uh, we're, we're, we're recording. Sit down, Craig. Have a little seat. Whoops, oh. steady on. Hi there, Bookasauruses, or whatever you call your audience. <laughs> <laughs> That's so offensive on so many levels. Bookasauruses. <laughs> liking books is not the same as liking paleontology. <laughs> we're very cool people. Hello, uh, I haven't made a video in a while, so I thought I'd rope somebody in to halve the workforce for me. <laughs> I told somebody the other day that boyfriends were called rent harvers in London and they believed me. <laughs> <laughs> who did you tell that to? Jane Garvey. I don't know who that is. She's from Women's Hour. I told her that like that's what we called them because like boyfriends we, halve your rent. Collectively um, as millennials. Yeah. So this is Craig. He is my rent harver and also now my work harver because he's going to talk for half of this video delegation <laughs> so yeah we're gonna talk through f photography books uh, which isn't my natural section of the bookshop um but i have been very enthralled by it since craig has been introducing me to some good ones you have not been enthralled i have been <laughs> semi-enthralled by the ones that i will be showing in this video <laughs> you've done your best i've done my really, done my really given it given it a good crack I'm, I'm, i do i, I like <laughs> So we're going to talk through some of our favorite photo books but first we want to talk about the fact that craig who's a yes. very famous photographer now uh, has been shortlisted for the british photography awards Mad. in the street photography section so now it's gone through all these like panels of judges it's now gone to a public vote it's really easy to vote you can click the link in the description it's po.st slash vote for craig can't um, believe you have it i've pasted that in so I'm many a, places I'm and i don't remember I'm it a stalker. so yeah it's really simple you don't need to fill out a form you don't have to give an email address no information is needed you literally just click a button it takes um, like 10 seconds it literally takes five seconds i'd say four seconds if you're fast depends how fast your fingers are yeah. you should do that uh, and also look for all the other categories because I had a lot of fun voting in all the other categories too I like having opinions me so it suited me down to the ground there's some very strong work in there but if you only have time to vote, to vote for one then uh, vote for the, this guy <laughs> if you want to um, if you want to you don't have to so should we get on with our photo books Craig? we should I think seeing as it's your video you should crack on first crack them out what have you crack got them for out. us um, so the first book I have is On the Night Bus by Nick Turpin. Um, I am a little bit of a stalker of Hoxton Mini Press and I've been watching since they first launched about five years ago. They launched with one book and I was like this is phenomenal. It's a book about an old man and it's incredible. I'll link it below. Uh, but this is one of their um, more recent ones. They're an independent publisher based in Hoxton in East London um, and they make affordable uh, photography books which is beautiful and they're all in like a beautiful format like this. And this one, um, Nick is a very famous photographer apparently. Not that I'm, I don't really know, but I'm assuming he is. Uh, but he basically, yes. between the hours of 5.30 and 7.30 for months, stood in a few places in London and shot people through the window of buses while it was raining. With a camera. With <laughs> <laughs> so yeah they're really beautiful mysterious kind of like they look almost like paintings because they're so smudged um, and I, I find them really like emotive and he also talks about how the commute is the transition between who you are at work and who you are at home and your professional self and your personal self and it's really photographs of people making that transition in their head and it's also like the idea of like them not feeling like they're being watched which is I guess kind of creepy but I guess that's the territory of um, photography unposed unsurveyed like look they have and like the fact that their identities are kind of smudged out i kind of want to write a story about every single person in it because i think it's really it's like something that when i'm like oh i don't know what to write about i can like pull it out and look at it i don't know i'm really fascinated by the idea, by the idea of commutes and stuff so I really i think it's beautiful and i like the fact they try and make stuff more affordable for people as well because you always gone about how expensive photo books are which is probably why a reason i haven't really tried them before very much because i'm just like have you ever tried to get into photography and buy some of the gear? It's expensive as shit. And then, to make it worse, the photo books are like £30 a pop, so this little guy was like 15, so, you know, if you want to get some cheap photo books, then Hoxton Mini Press, non-spawn, non-spawn, but... Uh, Independent publishers, yes. Absolutely balling yeah. with the Hoxton Mini Press. Love it. Craig, your turn! You're better at this than I am, and this is like the thing that I do. Well, I mean, like, but talking about books is the thing that I do, Yeah, so. no, but you're like... We're beautifully describing here. these photographs and I'm like oh <laughs> putting, putting me under the test now I'm like I did a whole degree in this <laughs> why do I have to drop that into every video by the it's way a, every video Craig, I'm like, I've got a oh, I went to university <laughs> listen right this is my this is my first selection out of the two we're doing two each by the way do we say that yeah. four books in total don't know. Uh, it's called uh, The Ballad of Sexual Dependency by Nan Golden um, this light is not doing these pages any favours so we didn't really think about that gloss finishes don't alas, recommend <laughs> alas here we are here we are so uh, The Ballad of Sexual Dependency was 
something that was shot by an angled in, in the late 70s, early 80s, and it's really like a documentation of her and her friends as they go through this period of their life together. Lots and lots of stuff happens within these years. There are themes of like sexuality, of death, of work, of like friendship, and all the different hurdles that they have to go across as they are living through these years. Um, one thing that I find really amazing about these photographs is it was kind of the first time that I looked at photographs and was like, ha, oh, you can have really strong emotive images without them being like these beautifully composed, like, ah, work of art. I'm trying to find the ones without the vaginas in them. So many vaginas. It's very hard. It's good because so the pictures- So much clunge. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Absolutely drowning. <laughs> So uh, Nan Golden always had her camera with her and her friends eventually just got used to this. It wasn't like a weird thing that when she'd whip her camera out and take a picture of them. So uh, consequently she was able to get some really raw images of lots of intimate moments and they're really telling. You can really like see what's happening in people's lives. You get like a real good insight. The narrative of the series as a whole is really great. Do you think because she didn't have a very high quality camera that was part of the fact that she got so many good shots as well? Because it's less intimate. Yeah, yeah. It's less like you're being watched if you have have like a shit camera. So the book is really about her friend's struggle for intimacy and understanding. And I feel like the narrative is like this really big roller coaster of emotions because there are so many like bleak and depressing moments. Friends die dying in it um, and the people that are left behind afterward coming to terms with the fact that their friend has died. But then there's also joyful moments in it as well. Ah, a joyful moment. So yeah, I think it's amazing and um, a really unique look at... I mean, it was un unique at the time. This sort of photography is done quite often nowadays people photographing their immediate family, their friends. I did it, but at the time it was really like nobody had ever done anything like this before, and especially in a way that was this raw and intimate, so yeah. I think it's great, uh, definitely give it, give it a try if you fancy. This is if one you... of my favourite shots in it. Lots of pictures of people looking sort of mysteriously into nothing, like pondering life. Mm -hmm. So if you fancy a, a life ponder, give this one a crack. <laughs> Dick. <Ooh>. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of dick and a lot of vagina and a lot of nakedness in it as well. Because, you know, it's raw and it's intimate, you know? Well, that's uh, just life, isn't it? It's a tasteful nude. Um, me, I, one of the books that I have really enjoyed and continue to enjoy because I haven't purposely haven't finished it, um, is Girl on Girl, Art and Photography in the Age of the Female Gaze. I took the dust jacket off, Craig. I'll tell you why, because it was really you, ugly. I just love how you say you purposefully haven't finished it. No, 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 no. The reason is because Lena is currently reading about 25 books <laughs> simultaneously. That's my style, that's just how I roll. But I love like just dipping into this and reading two of them because I think I'd find it quite overwhelming if I read them all at once. Too <laughs> much. Just narrowing it to too much life. feminism at um, once. But yeah, I took the cover off this, I'll be honest, because I really didn't like it. So if you Google this, it will have a different cover, but this is what it looks like under the dust jacket and I really love this. Um, so that's cool. So basically the, the concept is because so much art and photography has been shot with the male gaze in mind and with like the patriarchy as the overarching like kind of um, driving thing behind it. Not true? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just like, wow. Oh, that was me saying, fuck the patriarchy. <laughs> oh, right. I thought you were just like, <laughs> fake news. <laughs> Watch our relationship end on camera. <laughs> <laughs> go on, go on, go on. Um, yeah, so it's, it's really about the agency of female photographers and female artists and the way they want to look at and experience the female body. So a lot of it, like, in some ways, I guess, doesn't look that much different to a lot of, like, male f photography. The sentiment behind it is that women gaining agency over their own form and vision. Was that well explained? Who can say? Yes, yeah, um, So yeah, there's lots of amazing shots in it. This one's one of my favourite ones. I think that's really clever and really beautiful. That one's by Amanda Charchin. She does lots of ones where she kind of weaves women around nature and kind of does loads of stuff with kind of integrating them into the environment. This one is Nakia Brown. She um, did a big series on hair and like the kind of idea of grooming and behaving. So she does lots of kind of weird stuff around hair, burning hair, like dunking hair and things. The kind of idea of like the fact that this hair looks gross to us, but on a head it looks fine. A few pages that I always come back to are the ones from Pixie Liao, Liao, um, who has this series called How Could You Treat Your Boyfriend Like That? And it's like these images that like to us look kind of weird, like her in the, in the dominant position in the relationship and kind of using him as a prop. And like to me, I'm like, oh, that looks really weird, but I don't know why. And I guess it's because I'm used to seeing the reverse and that not being weird, walking into an art gallery and seeing like women kind of strewn over men without any agency or facial expression and me thinking that's really normal. So I really like the way she kind of plays with that. 
And I think it's really interesting. Oh yeah, she says, my boyfriend is Japanese and I am Chinese. Our cultural backgrounds are similar, but also vastly different in certain issues. Our relationship, is, our relationship now is still affected by the relationships between our two countries which I think is like, it's really fascinating. I'd love to read more about her. So yeah, I really like it, especially as I am a beginner photography reader, seer, um, viewer, And also consumer, a girl. <laughs> and also a girl. Woman, woman, but you know, girl, <coughs> I'm female. I'm not a girl. I'm not a girl, don't tell me what. Um, so yeah, I really, I think it's really cool. And then more stuff should exist like this. Um, and this one was again, like quite affordable, I think. It wasn't too much because I wouldn't spend <laughs> that much on a photography. <laughs> That's how we know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how we know, because I own it. <laughs> okay, are we done with that one? Yeah. We're all time. booked out? Okay, mm -hmm. cool. So my uh, second and final book is A Period of Juvenile Prosperity by Mike Brody. Uh, this is also my favourite photo book of all time. Is this fully in it's the It's so big! <laughs> it's a huge, it's a huge like coffee table book. So one thing I'm not a fan of is big photo books. Lots of people like them and it's good because it's like impactful, showing the work, showing it big. But I'm like, I just like little books. I don't know why, I just enjoy It's kind of like big newspapers. More. They will eventually die out because people will stop having coffee like, tables. Who has a coffee it's table this big? It's impractical, isn't it? Anyways, period of juvenile prosperity. I always struggle when I am trying to explain what it is that I love about this book but I, it like it taps into something and I think it is emotion <laughs> like whenever I saw the <laughs> what's that feeling I think it's emotion <laughs> so it follows uh, Mike Brody and his group of friends as they train hop around America in the late 90s early 2000s can you sort of flick through <laughs> some of the pictures Da -da. Um, the earrings are about one meter across. <laughs> Ring 012192 to purchase these incredible diamante earrings <laughs> Without giving too much away about this book, because I feel like I could talk about it for hours, but uh, it's probably best described like very simply, and it's that it feels very cinematic, and you know it, it's still images, but there's something about it that feels very much like you're there with him. He is shooting on a 35 millimeter camera and also a Polaroid camera, and he's just literally just taking pictures of him and his friends as they are train hopping across the states with no real sort of direction about where they really want to be going. They just sort of hop on trains and off they go. And it's the stuff that they um, experience along the way, the way that they survive, the way that they get food, the trouble they get into with police. Um, and it just feels like, it sounds so pretentious, but it feels like a movie, but it's like a photo series, you know? You're right there with them and you're really experiencing it. Also, he's such a fucking good photographer as well. Um, the it, Like, he, he shoots on really you know, not amazing quality gear, but there's a way that he's able to capture things and frame things and use light, you know, it's all natural, but there's a way he's able to um, treat, the, it's the treatment of the work that really just works and makes it, mm, I, I, it's just so difficult to find like a, a way of describing it, but yeah, that's, that's a pretty dodgy one. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh. Periods are gross. Women don't do that. <laughs> it's sort of very, you know, the images you get that are really popular on Tumblr, right? That are like, oh my God, serene, beautiful. These pictures that are like, ah, oh, life living in London. Wouldn't that be picturesque? And it's sort of like that same idea, but it's like, no, 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 no. You see each stage of the journey and you see it actually happening. So it's like he's living a movie, you know? Um, but it's all, it's all real. It's all documentary photography. So it's it's mind blowing, and it was like a real um, significant um, find of mine, and I feel like I learned so much from this book. So that's it. Um, oh, my arms hurt. It's pretty yeah, heavy. Really. It's heavy because it's heavy with some good photography. Heavy <laughs> Weight, with some weighty art. with talent. Art. Whoa! <laughs> that was it, really. Yeah, um, we're done. You can go home now. <laughs> Please recommend, at least recommend me more photography books in the comments below because I'd like to find some ones that I like. Because I, mean, I seem to be quite a fussy customer <laughs> when it comes to photography books. When it comes to everything. Um, everything. <laughs> Music, photography, Dick. films, you name it. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? That's a rude oh, word, let's say that. I'm 28. Where's your you filter? Go on, wrap up. End of the video. <laughs> Chop chop now, come on, we've been filming for um, 23 minutes. PO.ST slash vote for Craig. With um, a four, not to a vote for Craig 
in the British Photography Awards. Incredible. What can I say? Um, I'm so, kind of a big deal. I am actually really proud of you. Oh, Craig works you. really hard. It's ridiculous. Um, so yeah, um, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new here. Do subscribe to Craig. He has the, his, own photo his own photography channel. Yeah, and thank you for watching. And uh, I'll see you in my next one. You want to say it? Oh, um, Frog Snug Out. <laughs> Very good. Cool. You happy?